안녕하세요. 그럼 지금부터 그 예술가를 위한 생태사회주의 세미나 첫 번째 강연 시작해 보도록 하겠습니다. 저는 지금 대한공간 루프에서 디렉터로 활동하고 있는 양지윤이고요. 오늘 지금 보이시는 곧 바로 고틀립 선생님이 강연을 맡아주시고 그리고 김주원 선생님이 통역을 맡아주실 계획이세요. 네, 근데 통역을 어, 텍스트로 준비를 하셔서 영어를 들으시면서 번역된 국문 텍스트를 화면 공유를 해서 같이 보시면 될것 같습니다. 고틀립 선생님 소개부터 간단하게 하면서 시작을 할게요. 드릴 선생님은 그 디지털 마테리얼리즘을 가지고 PhD를 받으셨고 그리고 뭐 다양한 미디어 아티스트 작가로서도 활동을 하시고 큐레이터로서도 다양한 전시들 네, 진행을 하고 계세요. 그리고 그 본인 프로젝트 관련해서는 어, 강연 마지막에 조금 더 소개를 해주신다고 하시고 뭐. 그 디지털 마테리얼리즘 관련된 다양한 책 저서들이 있습니다. 뭐 기술에 대한 감사, 작, 가장 작은 것의 정치 경제, 디지털 유물론 같은 것들이 있고 현재 그 베를린 예술대학에서 디지털 미술 철학을 강의하고 계십니다. 어 저희 와 주셔서 감사드리고 그리고 그 고틀립 선생님이 부탁을 하신 것이 어, 편하게 중간에 질문이라든지 궁금하신 것들, 의견 있으시면 이 채팅방에 남겨주셔도 좋고 아니면 손을 들어서 이제 이야기를 해주시면 좋을 것 같습니다. 그래서 좀 자연스럽게 해달라는 편하게 생각하시면 좋을 것 같고요. 그리고 아, 현재 대한공간 루프에서는 이 세미나 연계에서 박재훈 작가의 개인전 실시간 연옥이 전시 중입니다. 그래서 한번 전시 10월 한달 동안 하니까요. 전시 보러 오시면 예, 좋을 것 같습니다. 그러면 오늘 강연 네, 시작을 하도록 할게요. 큰 틀에서 보면 1시간 반 이야기를 드렸는데 강연 내용이 한 45분 정도 되고 한 5분 정도의 휴식 시간을 가진 후 Q&A와 토론을 있을 수 있게 될 예정입니다. 그러면 고틀립 선생님 강연 부탁드리겠습니다. 그 제목은 강연 제목은 급진적 약속 에코 페미니스트 테크노 사회주의 예술의 새로운 역할들입니다. 네, 그럼 강연 시작하겠습니다. 감사합니다. Okay, hello everybody and Uh, welcome to the talk. Thank you all for coming. I hope you'll find it useful. As you see, um, uh, happily, uh, Dr. Ji Won Kim has uh, produced a Korean version of the talk, so uh, you can make sure you can be sure not to miss anything. This means I can uh, speak a little bit uh, more, um, yeah, without worrying that you're understanding. Hopefully, um, okay. 네, 아, 네, 강연에 와주셔서 정말 감사드립니다. 어, 저희가 순차 통역으로 하면 시간이 너무 길어질 것 같아서 이제 이렇게 텍스트로 준비를 했고요. 이제 자유롭게 보시면서 좀 참여하시면 되겠습니다. Yeah, go on. Okay, so uh, I will start reading, I guess. And uh, I'm sorry, I don't usually read uh, if, if I can avoid it. You know, I, I usually like to have a back and forth, but I think in this uh, situation, hopefully, it'll be good to have some dense input and then we can discuss after. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't need this anymore. Fine. Radical commitments, ecofeminism, techno socialism, new roles for the arts. The title of this talk promises a lot. And I would like to deliver, and not only that, deliver in a way that helps with our research and practice and as well leads us to a good discussion. This talk may be quite dense, but in the spirit of Donna Haraway's encouragement to stay with the trouble, I hope you will stay with me through the difficulties I would like to contend with today. There are also a few controversial statements to come, which I'm happy to elaborate with you. If you need to interrupt for clarification, please do. Otherwise, I'll be happy to respond to the questions after I give the talk. At the outset, I would like to thank uh, Alternative Space Lu and Director Ji Yun Yang for inviting me to give the talk. 
uh, in this exciting series. And Dr. Ji Won Kim for generously offering to help not only translate uh, for us today, but also advise me in the first draft of this talk. This talk will uh, follow the following trajectory. Uh, one, reproductive labor as a feminist and eco-feminist eco theory. Two, language between technical abstraction and biomaterial situation. Three, institutional and revolutionary politics, new roles for contemporary artwork. Four, some recent examples from my practice. Five, conclusion, Cthulhu scene politics, Cthulhu scene politics, bourgeois and socialist. Everybody knows the Cthulhu scene. That is uh, a neologism from uh, Donna Haraway refers, Cthulhu refers to the earth, right? It's the earth, this era of earth consciousness, as opposed to the Gaia hypothesis from, um, from uh, Lovelock and Margulis. Over the past years, I have extended my understanding of socialism as part of a practice of radical solidarity. Is everything okay? I hear some... Uh, traffic, but that's okay. Okay, I'll start over. Over the past years, I have extended my understanding of socialism as part of a practice of radical solidarity, which includes producing artwork, curation, project management, and pedagogy in various forms appropriate for our time. This all enmeshed in material exigencies of earning a living and caring for those around me. In this process, I have become keenly cognizant of what Silvia Federici calls reproductive labor, and what Stefania Barca extends powerfully in her concept of forces of reproduction. Those material processes on which our capacity to be here today and to think together or alone are predicated. The notion of reproductive labor emerges from the Italian operaista, the name means female worker in Italian, feminist critique of Marx, which strove to have acknowledged the reproductive role of women in reproducing socially necessary productive capacity. The use of the word reproductive extends from gestation to the daily reproduction of the worker's ability to work. This reproduction includes housework, including the caring work in bringing up children. In the mid 19th century, Marx considered that women were exploited not directly, but through their working spouse. When he sold his labor, on the market to the capitalist. The domestic care work called effective labor by Hart and Negri went unpaid. This insight was associated with the wages for housework in incentive, whereby a money value for care labor in the home would be attributed and dispersed to every housewife. Federici eventually moved away from this solution for various reasons, especially since attributing a money value to care work would submit that work to the logic of capitalism, whereby wages are always driven down through the free market to the bare minimum available for survival. Instead, she advocated the expansion and improvement of public services funded on massive scale by the state, such as childcare, kindergartens, schools, healthcare, elder care, subsidized or free housing, etc. This is um, feminism on a massive scale, on a social scale. All of which would alleviate the burden on all women and reproductive laborers without needing to attribute and give a particular stipend to every individual. This becomes even more pertinent when the category of caring reproductive labor was expanded by Federici to also include emotional and physical care of all kinds necessary to reproduce labor's capacity to labor, soothing the ravages of an abusive and exploitative system. Without reproductive labor, the entire economy would grind to a halt. Women strike anyone? Stefania Barca extends reproductive labor even further in her forces of reproductive, forces of reproduction to include the contribution of the biosphere to human activity. We humans evolved not separate from, but integrated in the biosphere with all the plants and animals and microorganisms on which we depend every day, emergent, symbiogenic, symbiogenetic, as Lynn Margulis had it, 
together with this particular planet, with its particular material conditions of day and night, seasons of warmth and cool, etc. Understanding this, we need to work out how to acknowledge or integrate in our understanding of economy and ecology, the contributions of implicit biosphere agency. Donna Haraway's socialism has expanded from a concern with the well-being of all human beings to affirm a radical commitment to all life. We need to acknowledge all human and non-human processes which permit us to meet together like this today, which reproduce our capacity to meet, to gather, to think and discuss. And this includes the reproductive capacities of the planet slowly emerging over millions of years and active within us and our technologies right here and right now. We humans are deeply of this planet. We emerged under the conditions of this planet and with the other things of this planet. When we send people away from this planet, we need to reproduce the conditions of this planet there at enormous cost. This space capsule vision of the future, Sarah Sharma calls mummy's basement in space because it takes for granted the enormous layer of the enormous, enormous labor of the biosphere of millions of years. Labor which geologist Jean-Marc Iancovici reminds us is irreplaceable. These biosphere contributions to human life, which in principle we can get for free on earth until now, need to be technically reproduced to support life in space. Mommy, as avatar for nature, is the infinitely dense, historically emergent and situated array of material relations on which every one of us depends to reproduce our capacity to act, yet is so fundamental we can easily ignore it. Mommy's basement refers to the safe spaces for adult male children who are still living in their parental abode as a taken for granted life support system akin to that required and also assumed in the fantasies of extraterr extraterrestrial travel and colonization. Understanding the deep material systems in which we are all embedded have come to, uh, sorry. Understanding the deep material systems in which we are all embedded, I have come to reject all claims of immateriality, immaterial labor, immaterial culture, immaterial information, everything, even thoughts, ideas, and data need to live somewhere and be materially re reproduced or maintained somewhere in living bodies, in books, in the circuitry of computers. There is not one idea, feeling, or concept which can exist immaterially. If you are not sure what the materiality of something is, it's probably your own body, and your body needs to be continuously reproduced. Thick present, the term from Haraway, is the theme of our annual program I'm curating at Westenhaag, a contemporary arts institution in The Hague. Haraway implacably urges us into the thick of this thick present, into the sometimes horrifying, monstrous complexity and grotesqueness of our situation, but always with her indomitable, boisterous humor and wit. Haraway, Haraway's prose is unique in how it blends violent anger and careful and caring history of science in what she calls responsibility. She practices a passionate engagement and struggle with words and writing. Like Spinoza, Haraway elaborates on the edge of ahumanism, a view of humanity as an infinitesimal part of cosmic material relations. Both Haraway and Spinoza explore the necessary tension between knowledge and action. The world is not human. We humanize, anthropomorphize the world necessarily because we humans are humans, not by definition, but in practice, social practice. Human being, like truth, is not a category. It's a practice which is conditioned by social expectations and exigencies. Just checking the time. Okay. Spinoza describes that reason works. Spinoza describes that reason works to help us understand 
because that process within us that we use when we reason also exists, is also active in the subject of our reason, of our reasoning. The reason we use to understand the growth of plants, for example, corresponds to a kindred process in the property which is at play in the plants we are observing. The reason we are able to derive useful information from reasoning the world is because of this correspondence between the action of reason in ourselves and in the subject of our reasoning. So our re the reason, the reasoning, the capacity of reason that's in ourselves is also in the plant, property of reason. Spinoza's an anthropocentric cosmology has provided a lot of support for feminist post Deleuzian new materialists. With and against Spinoza, these more recent thinkers have come to elaborate theories of emergence, environmental justice, and non human agency. But I brought Spinoza to encounter Haraway, even though Haraway, in interesting, nev interestingly, never mentions Spinoza especially to make a point about language, technology, and our thick present. Haraway attributes a lot of what is wrong in how we practice science and derive from this new technologies to what, she, to what she terms patriarchal capitalism, by which she refers to the specialization and mechanization of production, Taylorism, including knowledge, knowledge production, separating living processes into mechanical elements and to be automated and controlled. That was clear. So uh, just to reiterate, Haraway terms patriarchal capitalism, the specialization and, mechan and mechanization of production, Taylorism, including knowledge production, separating living processes into mechanical elements to be automated and controlled. This patriarchal mechanistic instrumentation of nature often translated and made more useful in Marx's sense in the form of women's work is fundamental to all production. This point is the focus of Barca's forces of reproduction text. This relationship to language is also developed in the work of philosopher of communication, Willem Flusser and thinker of technology, Marshall McLuhan. These two writers each in their own way attribute the radical abstraction, systemization, and specialization specific to Western scientific method and industry with the abstraction of language from the multidimensional embodied speaking of the, sorry. Um, these two writers, each in their own way, attribute the radical abstraction, systemization, and specialization specific to Western scientific method and industry with the abstraction of language from the multidimensional embodied speaking to the disembodied linear abstract alphabetic scripts. Okay, what I, what I meant there is um, la spoken language, what I'm doing now is embodied and situated. I'm here at loop, I'm a living human being, I'm speaking. Written language is abstract and um, systematized and it's disembodied or at least disembodied from me, re-embodied on the paper or on your screen. Okay, our current condition still depends on the radical abstraction from lived words of language to the silent words of abstract written codes which program our world. The word program is made up of pro, forward, and gram, writing. Programming is writing the future. Since social reproduction in our age is still programmed by linear texts, it cannot be called postmodernist. Today's technosphere is rather an intensification of modernist principles, and therefore not post, but most modernism. It's not post industrial, it's most industrial. It's not post capitalist, it's most capitalist. Our age is not post colonial. It's most colonial and will remain so as long as, imperialist, as, as imperialism dominates the global economy. If you find a term, if you find a term uh, which begins with post, try replacing post with most and you are very likely to have a much better theor theoretical approach. So yeah, just change post to most and see what happens. 
What we want is not post-feminism, of course, we want most feminism. In our present electronic age, where particle physics itself is a most, okay, in our present electronic age, where particle physics itself, a most modern, most industrial process, unleashes communication at the speed of light, we must try to integrate with our historical conventions of empiricism and criti critical analysis, the knowledge that there is no absolute abstraction or objectivity, that every truth is a material interaction or encounter. Now that's important. Every truth is a material interaction or encounter. So the truth is not an abstract truth. It always involves an encounter an interaction between two or more bodies. The insights of particle physics challenge our rational mechanistic worldview. The effects of particle physics instantiated, for example, in the functioning of electronic devices, like this Zoom call, challenge us, challenges us from deep within our everyday experience. Karen Barad's work grapples specifically with this problem where our rationality comes from a classical physics experience of the world and which today needs to encounter these alien insights from particle physics. Barad uses Niels Bohr's conception of complementarity for this, which is another way of staying with the trouble. And we can discuss this a bit later if you like. We can no longer seriously contend that we can analyze the world from some kind of abstract or detached point of view. We are always a part of what we are trying to analyze and understand. Likewise, there, is, there can no longer be any pretense or hope to elaborate in written language some kind of unarguable truth, to formulate through written language or written log logic some absolute certainty. No, as Haraway has long argued, knowledge, even written knowledge, is always situated and materially embodied. If nowhere else than in the reader, or in the material pages of a book, or metals of, a sc of screen pixels, whose reproduction is all socially and economically, and therefore politically conditioned. Radical and anthropic commitments force Haraway, like Spinoza before her, to contend with a difficulty which occurs in the mere fact of writing, which can only be ever which can only ever be destined for a human reader. Oh, say that again, sorry. Radical and, anthropo Radical and anthropocentric commitments force Haraway, like Spinoza before her, to contend with a difficulty which occurs in the mere fact of writing, which can only ever be destined for a human reader. So writing always implies a reader, a human reader. Every word, is written in the expectation that it will be deciphered in a certain way. This certain way is conditioned socially. How does one write with the non-human world in words which are necessarily anthropomorphizing in order to communicate? This is a theme I go into at length in my latest book, Digital Materialism. Since the meaning of language is socially conditioned, language cannot but anthropomorphize. That's also in the famous book, um, Cannibal Anthropology by uh, Eduardo Viviero de Castro. At stake in this discussion of language is our political agency to address the ecological crisis. The biosphere, Cthulhu scene or Gaia needs to be established ontologically in words for these words to be encoded in law and programmed into our future. Is there a, a way around words? Lexical formulations still determine the regulation of nations. On the other hand, words, laws, regulations have never been enough. As Anastasia Nezvatilova notes in her recent book, Sabotage, regulations mainly regulate the weak, while the powerful can hire lawyers to avoid punishment and pay any penalty. We need a counter politics, which attacks the problem from both the textual, official, and extra textual revolutionary positions. Haraway struggles, wrestles, and passionately plays with the language she employs, forcefully, forcefully neologizing, peppering her intense and demanding deliberations with provocative adjectives and redolent colloquialisms, and most importantly, integrating strategies from other literary arts like poetry 
and science fiction. We need new synthetic forms of thinking encountering philosophizing, which re-embody and re-situate language, which allow us to be both part of the phenomena we are trying to understand and still generate some critical tension. In this way, McLuhan chose to write using puns, jokes, and double entendre. Flusser looked to technical images, colors, and physical gestures, and Karen Barad engaged with theater. Elsewhere, in serious thinking of technology, we can see what has been called, or what can be called, a re-Socratic turn, where the lived body of the thinker is reasserted through a language which situates and bristles against universalizing abstraction of knowledge. Here, we can encounter an old word, a word which has accumulated a lot of cultural baggage, but a word very much which means staying with the trouble, which designates precisely this difficulty, the unintended but inevitable consequence produced by even the most precisely formulated and executed expression. This word is dialectics, and I hope you don't all run away when we're talking about dialectics. Um, I hope I make it interesting and fresh for you. My understanding of dialectics is like physical exercise. It's difficult and you feel clumsy when you're starting, but after a while, it gets easier. It informs us about our own bodies. Body and mind are one thing, of course. It's fun to do together, and it's fun to exchange techniques with others. We don't need the word dialectics. We could use the expression epistemic tension, but that's a lot more syllables. <clears throat> in the Hegelian sense, you would try to address something in words, but what you're really addressing is everything that words, terms, expressions allow you to address. The real real, which is pointed to with all the words, remains only indicated, but not directly addressed. This means that there's always a tension between the address and the thing addressed, the words you use and the things you're using the words to address. And the intellectual dance of that tension is dialectics. So dialectics is very dynamic and we need a lot of time to feel out these dynamics. And the art space provides time and safe space for that, as I will get to in a moment. People often say the objective of dialectics is to produce synthesis, thesis, the postulate, the address, what you say. Antithesis, all that cannot be addressed by the addressed, the real, and synthesis, possible meeting points between thesis and antithesis. But, but what is vital to note is that each synthesis is only provisional and each produces new dialectics because every synthesis is a new thesis. And so the process or dance or play goes on. Every artwork exhibited is a synthesis. The time and space fact occurrence happening of the exhibition in our lives is a moment of synthesis a provisional meeting point between reality and the techniques we're trying to use to address this reality. <clears throat> Acknowledging the insufficiency of Western patriarchal capitalist, Taylorist philosophical language to address something as difficult as anthropogenic climate change, Haraway urges us to develop, develop new modes. Often she will propose a complex of the initials SF, string figures, speculative fabulation, science fiction, so far, synthetic feminism maybe, which will allow us to act more effectively in the thick present. These emerging, emerging and probably always emerging experimental techniques need to be practiced and the results of the practice need to be shared, discussed and analyzed. These must be the iterative processes and this requires a certain continuity which can be provided by the contemporary art space. The university is also somewhere which is attempting to provide space for such practices. But the university is in crisis. And as Joy James is so good at art articulating, there's a political limit in the university where activism cannot take place. There's, yeah, uh, Joy James is very good at, um, articulating this, this limit uh, where, uh, yeah, what, 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 act, what activist 
but activism can take place in the classroom because of the danger it poses to the uh, funding bodies that reproduce the university. Even in business, in the startup world, there are such spaces of synthetic criticality, but these are profit-driven, and so their activism has a particular priorities and deadlines which destroy SF. The contemporary art space is particularly able to afford the space and time needed to cultivate the new cultural practices and proto-institutionalities to address our great challenges radically, intersectionally, and, in, and transdisciplinarity in international solidarity. Mao called this place of meeting where the contradictions can be explored together, identity. It's paradoxical in English because uh, in common liberal parlance in English, identity is understood as divisive if defensively so. For Mao, the meeting of politics and production or reproduction is only possible when commonalities can be identified together. It is only on the basis of this commonality, Fed, Federici would call it reproductive labor, that we can come together and work together for mutual benefit. This meeting point Mao called identity in his essay on contradiction. 1937's revolutionary Mao was practicing intersectionality in a reciprocal learning process whereby the party learned what the people needed and the people learned what the party could do for them. The identity is not static, it's always provisional, generated by the participants. Problematically, in our radical Harrowayan or Spinozist and anthropocentric ecofeminism, at least one of the parties of the identity must be human. The identity of a thing in the etymological sense of something that happened. The etym sorry, the identity is a thing in the etymological sense of something that happened. Now this something that happened, an event which generates a community who experienced the something event can be either accidental or intentional. It provides the basis for people to come together to address their circumstances across the differences of background of disciplinary specialization of class position. A car accident or tsunami can be such an event or COVID-19 is such an event and art exhibitions are such events. The contemporary art space is evolving in its social role to provide more space and resources for the difficult intersectional and transdisciplinary discussions and collaborative work required to respond to the pressing challenges we face. Words and practices of course, are of course not enough. In the case of important trouble like ecofeminism, it is essential that we appropriate the legitimacy and social gravity of such institutions to coalesce power around our nascent practices. As Silvia Federici warned in her 1984 essay, Putting Feminism Back on Its Feet, in order to translate our pains and pleasures onto a page or a song, we must have a sense of power enough to believe that our words will be heard. So this is what we've been exploring at um, at Westin Haag in a series of experimental summer schools, which uh, we've been running and where we've developed an elaborate public involvement program, which accompanies our ex exhibitions and other events. And we're gonna show a couple of um, summer schools. So now we're almost at the end. We're just, I'll just show a little bit about uh, my practice. Maybe you can see um, the Westin Haag and you can explore this a bit on your own. Uh, this is a, the school we just ran in August. Um, and here uh, it was a very performance oriented school. We did uh, a lot of um, body work um, and we tried to, uh, yeah, so we had, uh, it was led by a couple of performance makers and this was augmented by a uh, uh, bioscientist. We were trying to integrate um, yeah, information from third world struggles, from biodiversity struggles, um, and from uh, the question of uh, energy transition with uh, exercises, uh, body oriented exercises. In the end, we, uh, the participants all generated their own uh, performative responses, which connected their own practices from before the workshop uh, to the new inputs and the new um, techniques that were learned or uh, uh, practice during the workshop. So that's one. 
Um, <clears throat> the other one uh, from last year, uh, or actually the year before the uh, uh, the pandemic, uh, is a little bit more uh, well, more or less the same um, combination. We also had a body worker doing a lot of listening exercises, um, a lot of breathing exercises. And, uh, and then we had a very strong uh, feminist uh, political theorist, uh, Eva Mayerska, uh, was talking about yeah, a lot of anarchist uh, and uh, socialist feminist theory. Uh, Cassie Thornton, who's uh, talking a lot about debt and the pressure of economic, economic pressures on, on us. Um, and yeah, the, the, the main practice here was to integrate uh, criticality with a, a, a situated body-oriented practice. So thinking and uh, being physically there, uh, how can we be critical uh, and still be involved? So that's that. Um, uh, let, me, let me transfer it really quick. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, uh, 이, 이게 두개다 그, 그 고트리오 선생님이 운영하셨던 그 서머스쿨 프로그램 워크숍에 대해서 한 얘기인데요. 그냥 간략히 말씀드리면 둘다 이제 이 참여자들이 이제 과, 어, 원래 있었던 환경에 진짜 그들의 신체를 이용해서 어, 어떤 퍼포머티브한 어떤 비판성을 보여준 어, 그런 것들을 이제 스스로 찾아가는 그런 실험이었다고 합니다. Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, and just quickly, a couple of artworks that I'm uh, working uh, on right now. This is a work that's actually on display at Ars Electronica right now. Um, it's a um, living process in the art space that tries to show all the uh, all the contributions that are necessary to grow one square meter of wheat. This is wheat in the uh, in the middle there. So everything is is calculated. Everything is is shown on screens. All the water, all the uh, air circulation, all the nutrients, all the costs. And uh, we've we've shown this work in several places now. Uh, we've developed a, you know, a good sense of how much it costs to grow this wheat. Um, actually, it, it will, it, this, this amount of wheat would actually feed one person for one day. So the reason we, we chose wheat instead of like a uh, salad or, or some other kind of leaves is because wheat is a, one of the, is, is a food that we actually need for energy. It's like rice here in Korea. So uh, you, can't, you can't survive just on salad or any kind of leafy greens. You need uh, uh, grains which contain a lot of energy, right? We need energy, uh, kilocalories, like calories that we get in our food. Those are energy from the sun originally. And if we want to grow things indoors, like artificially, we need to replace that energy with the electrical energy through the lights. So uh, there's no, when you, when you try to grow something like wheat or rice, uh, you notice how much energy is really needed in, um, uh, in our diet and how difficult it is to replace that uh, artificially. This is the Kotele teacher who did the art of 뭐 이제 알루스 일렉트로니카 등 여러 곳에서 전시가 되었던 건데 어, 이 작품이 의미하는 바는 이제 저희가 생활을 하고 삶을 살아가기 위해서 어, 쌀이나 보리와 같은 그런 곡물들이 필요한데 이것이 에너지로 환원이 되고 그 에너지가 이제 공급이 되려면 얼마만큼의 그런 어, 인위적인 전기나 그런 것들이 필요한지 그것을 다 계산해서 어, 이제 보여준 것이라고 합니다. Is it the same thing? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. the same thing. Yeah, it's the same yeah, okay. project. I mean, we, we can share this uh, these links so you can look at these works mm -hmm. a little bit more in depth. And this? Uh, yeah, and, and this is the last thing I, I mentioned. Like I'm working on a, uh, I have a small institute in Berlin where we are working on various uh, um, uh, problems, especially the, the problem of, of how data is, re is, is made 
is represented. So data is invisible. Uh, the way that we represent data is always political. And that's what we're studying here. Mm. Yeah, it 이제 이 프로젝트들이 주로 얘기하고 있는 것은 이제 데이, 보이지 않는 데이터와 같은 것들이 어 이제 보이지 않으면서 이러한 데이터라는 물질이 언제나 항상 정치적이라는 것을 보여주는 어 그런 제스처라고 합니다. Yeah, thank you, uh, Jiwon. Uh, I mean, we can discuss these these, <laughs> these questions later. Okay, so this is the last section. I'm uh, I'm sure you're happy to hear. Uh, and I I wanted to uh, just make a, make a little bit more concrete uh, political uh, analysis here. So I hope you will appreciate it that, appreciate this. Uh, um, it's just it's, it is an example and, and it's an example from your neighbor. Okay. The last difficulty I'd like to discuss is the time is the time we need to effectively address the anthropon anthropogenic climate crisis. So it's a question of time. Do we have enough time to, uh, to mobilize politically uh, in order to address, for example, uh, the reduction in carbon emissions that we need to, uh, that needs to take place before 2030 or 2035, depending on which model. And a lot of studies say that uh, the way that our bourgeois democracies work, uh, we will not do it in time. So this is a kind of controversial part of the talk. I hope you like it. Okay, we can see that for all reservations we have about China, they are not only thinking, but industrializing away from fossil fuels faster and more intensively than anywhere else in the so-called capitalist world. This is revealing, like with the corona crisis, the difficulty of our system of bourgeois democracy in acting quickly and effectively to address complex emergencies. For a bourgeois system, time is about growth and profits. So every policy, including climate policy, needs to produce growth and profits on time. This is why the only policies seriously considered in Western states are green tech, stopgap proposals like carbon sequestration, carbon credit schemes, et cetera. And this strategy is backed up by what, by what Naomi Klein termed disaster capitalism, where profits are made even when lives and livelihoods and their production are destroyed or wasted. On the other hand, the one party democracy in China through its vastly heterogeneous political body of 95 million people is building out a long-term sustainable future-oriented industrial economy on massive scale. Unlike the bourgeois dem democratic public-private partnership, Chinese centralized environmental policy is based on the advice of its best scientists, engineers, and economists, ensuring that all people have good conditions to live as the reproduction of society is shifted away from reliance on fossil fuels. As we have seen, the difference between capitalism in, in China and capitalism here and in the West is that in China, Capitalists are completely under the discipline of the Communist Party, and their interests are secondary to what is determined to be in the interests of the people in general. Interestingly, this also involves recognizing the requirement to attend to the symb symbiotic reproduction of the biosphere. The communist tradition is about using reason towards the best outcomes for humanity. That's key phrase, I guess. The communist tradition is about using reason towards the best outcomes for humanity. Until now, as Andrew Feenberg has remarked in his 10 Paradoxes of Technology, rather than having the best technology science can provide, we have the ones that make a profit. And this takes place increasingly under the logic of disaster capitalism. Haraway's feminist socialist response is to decry this patriarchal profit motive ide fix with all innovation, where all innovation is oriented to extract maximum shareholder value from the reproductive capacity of the planet. Haraway's radical socialism here is to solidarize with all life in all its ramifications, understanding the particular political agency of her primary audience, other humans. 
While we must completely involve ourselves in our circumstances, there's no outside, we must also continue to produce rational criticality, which can articulate demands also in the form of legal syntax and scientific argument for the subjugation of patriarchal capitalism to the demands of reproductive labor. We must subjugate patriarchal capitalism to the demands of reproductive labor. Painfully conscious of how abstract scientific rationality is intensifying and accelerating the disruption and destruction of the biosphere, Haraway does not abandon rationality, but rather attempts to situate it in living processes, entrenching human aspiration in the destiny of other life on the planet, on this planet. Haraway's socialist ecofeminism acknowledges that both the challenges we face are reproduced on a massive, even planetary scale, which require macro state political action. Sorry, I said that completely wrong. Haraway's socialist ecofeminism acknowledges both that the challenges we face are reproduced on massive, even planetary scale, which require macro scale political action and that we understand nature by critically encountering and attending to each other in intimate encounters. Nature, like truth, is socially contingent. The telos of Western rationality is eco-socialism. We must appropriate existing institutionalities to, and generate new ones, which can cultivate practices for feminist eco-socialism. And here's the last paragraph. Whether or not we manage to globally reduce carbon fuel consumption, limit irreparable climate change and mass extinction, our destiny on this planet and with all other human beings inside and outside of us. Sorry, say it again. Whether or not we manage to globally reduce carbon fuel consumption, limit irreparable climate change and mass extinction, our identity is on the, this planet with all the other beings inside and outside of us. Whatever we do, either to attenuate or exacerbate the difficulties we face, we will create more trouble. And staying with that trouble, I would like to close with this characteristically paradoxical exhortation from Donna Haraway, which will always necessarily include humanity in her best hope for the future. There are no guarantees, no arrow of time, no law of history or science or nature in such struggles. There is only the relentlessly contingent SF worlding of living and dying, of becoming with and unbecoming with, of sympoiesis, and so just possibly of multi-species flourishing on earth. That's from Staying with the Trouble, page 40. And with that, I thank you very much for listening. I hope uh, you, <laughs> you survived. And I'm very much looking forward to uh, your questions or challenges, uh, problems, complaints, et cetera, please. Thank you very much. Then, if there are questions or questions, I don't have to ask any of you, but I still haven't asked any of you. I think the stories of the stories are very dancing, so I think about these things and I think it's difficult to talk about the questions. I think it's difficult to talk about the questions. So now it's 3.54, so it's about 6 minutes left. 좀 고민해 보시고 이야기들 다시 좀 생각을 해 보시고 4시부터 저희 다시 와서 토론하고 Q&A 섹션 같이 진행하면 좋을 것 같습니다. 네, 그러면 4시에 다시 뵙겠습니다. 감사합니다. 네, 그러면 4시여서요. 저희 시작하도록 하겠습니다. 저희 토론을 하다 보니까 다들 그 카메라 켜 주시면 좋을 것 같고 그리고 성함 이름을 좀 본인 성함으로 좀 바꿔 주시겠어요? 어, 한 분이 아이폰으로 되셨는데 제가 어느 분인지. 저희 출석 체크도 할겸 해서 그러면 네, 부탁드리겠습니다. 카메라 켜주시고 마이크는 꺼주셔도 될것 같고요. 그리고 성함만 어, 본인 성함으로 
교체 부탁드립니다. 안 들리시나요? 카메라 켜 주시겠어요? 헬로. 네, 그러면 어, 카메라 안 된다는 분들도 계셔서 우선 이야기를 시작을 해보겠습니다. There's some chat question. 네, 채팅방에 질문 올려주셔도 좋을 것 같아요. 제가 지금, 어, 네. 그러면 김지원 선생님께서 통역 같이 하면서 이야기를 좀 이어갔으면 합니다. 어, 그러면 우선 조금 더 시간이 필요하신 것 같아서 제가 좀 질문을 드려보고 싶어요. 오늘 이야기들 저 너무 흥미롭게 들었고 아직도 계속 이해를 하려고 하는 어, 그리고 생각을 해보려고 하는 상황이지만 그러면서도 저희가 아무래도 이 운영을 하는 주체가 대한공간 루프라고 하는 전시예술 현대미술 전시 공간이고 그리고 이제 저희가 테크놀로지 기반한 예술가들 작업들을 많이 전시를 해오고 있어요. 그런데 그 예술가의 역할에 대해서 이런 에코페미니즘이라든지 테크노 소셜리즘이라든지 이렇게 굉장히 변 지금 디지털 테크놀로지 환경이 바뀐 상황에서 새로운 예술가의 역할 같은 것들을 어떻게 바라보시는지 어떤 것들이 어떤 실천들이 가능하다고 보시는지 그런 이야기부터 시작을 하면 어, 좋지 않을까 생각을 합니다. So, 어, 지원, 지원, can you translate this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, are you ready? Are you ready to get uh, questions? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, Director Ji Yun Yang first gave you a question. So, um, she's still processing the talk and as a director of this, uh, host of this uh, contemporary art space, uh, the, the art, art space loop, alternative art space loop has been doing a lot of exhibitions using technology. So she was really curious about trying to uh, process more um, particular examples of the uh, roles, new roles of artists practicing this eco-feminism or techno-socialism. So she, she wants to try to like kind of articulate or kind of uh, try to come up with some more detailed image of this artist's practice or artist roles. So did you have any um, views on this or kind of examples of the artist's practices? Uh, we can't hear you. Okay, yeah, I think one important um... Very, very vital fundamental uh, point is that there, there needs to be more women in the spaces. So uh, if there's, there's more women in the spaces, uh, it's, it's safer to discuss certain topics, right, together. So uh, all the efforts that may, may just seem to be like <laughs> occupying the space or, 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 or um, even like quota based, like where you, although it's a very unsatisfying um, arbitrary way to do it, like to say we have to have like half the exhibitions by women um, helps. I think it, it, that all helps to uh, improve the conditions where important discussions can take place. So that's the first thing. 
먼저 첫 번째로 말씀드릴 것은 어, 이런 공간이나 여러 가지 그러니까 뭐 예술 공간이든 어떤 공간을 포함해서 좀더 많은 여성들이 참여하고 여성들로 모여진 공간들이 있어야 한다고 생각을 하는데 왜 그러냐 하면 은 이제 여성들이 더 많아지고 그, 그게 메저리티가 되다 보면 어떤 토픽에 대해서 이제 토론할 때 훨씬 그들이 이제 안전하다고 느낄 수 있기 때문입니다. 그래서 그것이 먼저 현행되어야 한다고 생각, 그것이 첫 번째로 말씀드리고 싶습니다. Um, yeah, then there's, because there's a lot of practices that, that women are, are uh, engaged with. It's nowadays, for example, in terms of eco-feminism, there's, like, there's a place in Berlin called Art Laboratory Berlin. Which features a lot of bio art experiments, experiments with uh, biological material like uh, algae and uh, psilocybin kind of mushrooms and different things, not psilocybin, sorry, uh, uh, but other fungi um, and even uh, hormones. And uh, this, this is also a meeting place between science and art. And it's not maybe considered fine art, but it's definitely produced. In, in correspondence with artists, people who self-identify as artists and scientists and scientists slash artists. And these kind of practices are, are quite popular and uh, especially quite, um, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll find a lot of women there. Mm. Uh, Ecofeminism is related to art laboratory. 이제 많은 애들이 이제 바이오 아트를 실험을 하고 있습니다. 이것은 이제 바, 알제 알지 네, 미역 같은 것들. 야, 나 뭐, 어, 미역. 네. <웃음> 뭐 머시룸 어 뭐냐 버섯 아니면 미역. 호르몬과 같은 어 이제 생체 물질 같은 것들로 이제 실험을 하고 있는데요. 이게 어 이제 뭐 아주 파인 아트한 공간이라고는 할 수도 없을 수도 어, 그렇게 보일 수도 있겠지만은. 이제 스스로 이제 어, 아티스트라고 생각하는 이들 혹은 스스로 과학자 겸 아티스트라고 생각하는 사람들이 모이는 어떤 만남의 장소로서 이러한 어, 실천들이 이루어지고 있는데 여기서 조금 어, 그, 좀 희망을 보고 있는, 있습니다. I, I think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of spaces like that across Europe. Um, there's there's a Ludmilla in, uh, in, in Ljubljana in Slovenia. There's a few in Slovenia, strangely. Um, there's the Vach in, in uh, Amsterdam. There's, there's various spaces which encourage uh, this kind of uh, discipline crossing work. And I think that's something that ecofeminism is very, very good at, uh, at doing um, because it's grounded in, in much more in lived experience and in the reproduction of of the experience of, of, of viewing art or, or, or the social experience of art. Um, so, but of course this, this is kind of outside of the conventional uh, realm of what, what's considered fine art. Yeah. So I, I think that, I think that the, the fine, art, uh, fine art institutions need to uh, open up uh, to these practices and yeah. 네, 이게 외에도 유럽에 많은 이제 그런 공간들이 있는데 신기하게도 슬로베니아에 좀 많이 있고 네, 암스테르담, 바하에도 어, 이와 같은 공간들이 있습니다. 근데 이와 같은 공간들은 이제 특징은 이제 여러 가지 학제를 교차한다는 점이 있는데요. 이것이 이제 에코페미니즘과 관련해서 중요하게 볼 점이라고 할수 있겠습니다. 왜냐하면 이와 같이 학제를 여러 가지 학제를 교차한다는 것은 우리가 사는 삶에 재생산, 재생산하는 어떤 정말 사라지는 그 경험, 어떤 아트의 소, 소셜한 경험, 사회적 경험을 이제 호출하는 것이라고 할수 있겠고 그렇기 때문에 이제 그것이 뭐 이제 관습적인 파인 아트라고 불리지는 못할지라도 이제 파인 아트 그 어, 현대 미술 완전 어, 좀 관습적인 현대 미술을 조금 더 오픈업해서 이런 것들을 좀 실행은 실천을 해야 할 필요가 있다고 생각합니다. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, uh, if, we, if we look at the changing role of art and artists, like we have artists today making uh, NFTs, for example, or as media artists. And, and yeah, there's, there's so many new uh, realms of expression which uh, don't fit conventionally in, into, uh, into the art space. But I think yeah, the art space is, is also itself in crisis, whether it's for funding or, 
or for legitimacy. I think uh, all this stuff is 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 at play, right? Uh, uh, people who have uh, feminist um, commitments need to um, need to uh, express them or or assert them in these spaces. Um, I mean, it, it's also a question of, of uh, who the audience is, of course, and who you're talking to, because, uh, you know, in the art space, it is, it's necessarily kind of a bourgeois space. So you're trying to, uh, you're, you're trying to communicate with, with other bourgeois who may be closer to power, or you're talking to uh, the collector's level, like the, the, you know the ownership level of society, which is, uh, which is, is the power, and those are kind of discourses where, um, you know, the where, yeah, where you can where you can communicate. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's most important just to be to be present and communicate your experience and and uh, communicate uh, your lived experience and and your concerns. It's not. Uh, the same thing as uh, what Federici is talking about in terms of, you know, um, uh, so, like improving the, the, the conditions of all women, which, you know, in every society would be major, major would, would be mostly um, working class women. And in that case, your militancy would, would take a different uh a different um, form, right? Because you're in, in, in terms of raising the conditions of all women in the society together, you can, you can attack, you can attack that uh, through the, through your community in the, in the bourgeois communities, if you're, if you're of that community, or you can, or you can be militant in a different way, which, which helps to, I mean, not, or, I mean, in, in, in the best case, both and, right? You will be militant. And that's where like the eco-socialism comes in, right? If you're like a, a socialist, then you will uh, also be mili militant to improve the conditions of all women in the society and, and around the world. Um, uh, whereas if you are uh, militant in the bourgeois um, realm, then you will be... Um, communicating to those those people who can influence uh, legislation, for example. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Ah, 그래서 이제 예술가, 요즘에 예술가들의 어떤 역할들이 많이 새롭게 나타나고 있죠. 이것은 이제 미디어 아트나 문, 뭔가 이제 새로운 예술의 표현들이 이제 등장하면서 이것도 같이 등장했다고 생각을 하는데요. 어, 그래서 이제 어, 페미니스트 커뮤니티도 이와 같은 어, 그런 표현들을 그들의 어, 공간에서 그들의 환경에서 표현을 해야 한다고 생각을 합니다. 근데 중요한 것은 당신이 누구에게 이야기하냐, 그러니까 청중이 누구냐, 관객이 누구냐의 문제인데요. 왜냐하면 이제 아트 스페이스 그, 그 관습적인 파인 아트 스페이스를 생각을 하면 거기는 좀더 이제 부르주아 혹은 이제 권력과 밀접한 어떤 어, 사람 사람들 어떤 사회를 이제 쥐락펴락하는 사람들에 의해서 좀더 밀접한 공간이어 왔죠. 근데 이제 어 근데 그좀더 예술가로서 우리가 좀더 가질 수 있는 어 유용한 전략은 어 각자 각자가 있는 환경에서의 그 사라진 경험에 대해서 이야기하는 것입니다. 그래서 페데리치도 뭔가 어 모든 우, 모든 여성에 대해서 이야기하기보다는 워킹 클래스에서 좀 그, 그의 글에서, 그녀의 글에서는 좀더 스페시픽하게 특별, 특정적으로 이야기를 했는데요. 그래서 예술가들도 그들의 어, 자신의 커뮤니티에서 이제 어, 문제의식을 드러내는 것도 중요합니다. 그런데 이제 또 이것이 사회주의, 그러니까 우리가 이야기하고 있는 에코 페미니, 에코 소셜리즘, 사회주의로 얘기를 하면 우리의 그런 특정한 고유한 커뮤니티와 그리고 모든 사람들을 위한 이야기까지 확장될 수 있다고 생각 yeah, so that's something that Haraway does really well. She's able to be eco-feminist and eco-socialist. Uh, 그래서 도나 Haraway 같은 경우는 이런 면에서 에코 
어, 페미니즘과 에코 사회주의를 같이 실행 실천한다고 할수 있겠죠. 어 지금 카톡에 아, 제 개인톡 문자를 주셔서 질문을 제가 올려 대신 올려놓았는데요. 그 채팅방에 그 선생님께 질문을 드리겠습니다. 어, 최근 중국은 거기요? 네, 최근 중국은 공동 부유를 내세웁니다. 이게 덩샤오핑 아, 이후 이어진 정책 노선에서 큰 변화를 의미한다는 견해도 있고 그보다는 시진핑 체제의 권력 강화를 위한 의미가 크다는 견해도 있습니다. 선생님이 지향하는 자본주의 극복의 맥락에서 본다면 어떤 의미를 갖는다고 보십니까? 아시다시피 중국은 최근 사교육도 전면 금지했습니다. Okay, the next, next question is about China. Okay. So, uh, so recently China has been uh, kind of, what is this? Common out, commonwealth. They, they have been advocating this, the commonwealth. Mm -hmm. And then after Deng Xiaoping, this has been, there has been meant this uh, massive changes in terms of this uh, policy direction they're having. And then, and, but, in, but other than that, uh, I think people are getting this as like the, the, the government is having more power through this. So there is this like uh, split opinions about it. So, um, so uh, what do you think in terms of, uh, when you're saying this in this context, of uh, eco-socialist kind of uh, against this patriarchal, uh, pat patriarchal, wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, what do you think this means? So like, what do you think that like, China uh, forefronting this commonwealth? The, what, what do you think is the gesture behind this? Is it more about the government is strengthening their power or kind of uh, what else, I think? I think, I think the, the, I mean, under Xi Jinping, from what I understand, the government wants to intensify debate within the Communist Party. So people often uh, describe that there's no free debate in China, but within the Chinese Communist Party, there are Keynesians, there are liberals, there are even Miesians, you know, there are uh, radical free market people. There's all kinds of people. There's uh, radical feminists and there's more, uh, and there's, there's eco-socialists and eco-feminists. Uh, and as far as I understand you, over the last five years, uh, Xi Jinping has been trying, or not Xi Jinping, I mean, the, the Communist Party has been trying to uh, cultivate a lot of dissensus and argument and debate within the party to improve policy. So uh, maybe the, uh, I mean, to achieve the Commonwealth, uh, it, it will require uh, a lot of discussion, a lot of argument. And I, I guess uh, whether that is, that is, that means that the party has more power um, I don't know, but it should be that the party has more approval. And that is certainly the case. Uh, since Xi Jinping has gone through this very radical anti-corruption campaign and, and also uh, done, as, as you can see in the news almost every week, uh, some big company is being uh, legislated or re restricted from, from profiting uh, extraordinarily at the expense of the whole of the economy. Uh, the, the economy is being very intensively managed for the benefit of everybody, for the commonwealth. So, um, and the approval rating is, is a going up. I mean, if you trust the <laughs> official approval ratings, but uh, so, yeah, I mean, the, the idea I think is that the party is not more powerful, but more successful. Mm -hmm. 
in satisfying the needs of the people, mm. <laughs> in, mm. including women. And uh, and uh, now, not that it has to be, uh, and it's certainly not enough. But it's not that. And don't take me as like the mm. you know representative of the Chinese government. But uh, <laughs> uh, that, um, women's membership in the Chinese in the Communist Party is is constantly going up. Uh, uh. So, uh, it's not enough. Uh, should be more. And uh, there's uh, official statements from Xi Jinping and other uh. authorities that uh, are saying that it's not enough and it needs to improve. Uh. What was it? Women's women's uh, women's membership. Oh, okay. In the in the party. Okay. Yeah, it's something around twenty eight percent now. Something like that. Uh, okay. Uh, 약간 지난 이렇게 강연에서도 말을 했는데 이제 지난 5년 동안 어 이제 당가 겉으로 봤을 때는 굉장히 이제 되게 단일 당으로 보이는데 사실 당 안에서는 굉장히 많은 어떤 디베이트와 다른 의견들이 오가는 굉장히 민주적인 어 절차를 거친다고 합니다. 어 그래서 이제 그 선생님의 저, 어, 의견은 이제, 이제 그 이들이 이제 중국이 공동 부유를 내세우는 것은 어 사실 더 많은 디스커션과 더 많은 그런 아르규먼트 당 안에서의 그거를 더 많이 불러온다고 합니다. 음 그래서 어 사실 그래서 이것 이것이 공동 부유를 내세우는 것이 이제 더 당의 당 자체가 더 화, 어, 강화를 한다는 차원보다는 조금 더 어, 많이 고민하는 네, 그런 것을 의미한다고 생각을 하신다고 합니다. 그리고 최근에 보셨을 때그당 안에서의 이제 여성 의원의 이제 퍼센테지가 한 20% 정도로 좀 많이 완화된 것을 볼수 있다고 합니다. 근데 이제 오해하지 마실 될게 이제 너무 중국 실제로 이제 관찰하신 것을 말씀하신 것이고 이제 중국 정부에 대해서 이제 대변하는 입장 아니라고 하십니다. One, one, maybe one more thing about China and the reason I, I bring it up is just the, the question of, of attending to people's conditions or even the conditions of nature on massive scale, right? And uh, I think that's what we see that is necessary in the world and how that can take place. You can see that in a in a um, yeah centralized administration like like in China that can that can happen on a on a, on a massive scale uh, much more quickly. Mm -hmm. So if there is a feminist policy and in pro policies to improve the conditions of women, for example, uh, across the whole nation, uh, not only uh, bourgeois and upper class women, but also the uh, all the majority of women who are are working, um, mm. yeah, that can take place on a massive scale uh, much faster. Mm. 사실 이와 같은 정책의 구조가 어, 환경, 그러니까 여성의 조건이나 뭐 인간의 조건뿐만 아니라 이제 환경, nature, 자연의 조건 혹은 환경의 조건도 굉장히 큰 거대한 스케일로 굉장히 빠르게 이제 어, 개선할 수 있는 그런 효과적인 어떤 구조라고 합니다. In the best case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Sujin Chong gave you a uh, question. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, really thank you for your talk. And she doesn't think that she really observed everything mm -hmm. from your talk, but so this could be kind of an absurd question. But um, when she was hearing your talk, she was associating kind of, your talk kind of reminiscent of Jason Moore's 
real obstruction and cheap labor. She thought about those while you're talking. And then and also Jane Bennett's uh, thoughts about uh, the limits of the language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was really interesting for her. So um, Thank you. about the, uh, she found it very interesting when you talk, talked about the Chinese one party democratic uh, mm -hmm. things. And then, um, and she was wondering uh, if this is, this can be really called a uh, heterogeneous, like totally, solely heterogeneous uh, political party, particles, political system. Can it really be called in that way? And then if that could be called as a sustainable direction <laughs> and how could, and how can this worlding or kind of synthetic uh, relations can be possible through this in that context. So, 여기까지 할까요? 아니면 더 계속. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, well, yeah, thank you very much uh, for your uh, responses and I'm happy it's it's useful to you. Um, certainly, from what I understand, the, the Chinese Communist Party is extremely heterogeneous, uh, not only in terms of, uh, of um, uh, political orientation, but also of, you know, uh, background and expertise. Um, it's certainly not a perfect system, but which system is, uh, I don't know. Uh, they're all, they're all, they all have uh, their work to do <laughs> to improve. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a work in process. Of course, like you might say that, okay, well, mm, communism uh, as a as a uh, ideology is uh, not uh, not homogeneous and not heterogeneous in that sense because everybody has to become member of the communist party uh, but communism is of course a, is something that is uh, very far off in the future and uh, if ever um, something and and there can be many many different ways to understand how we can get there if we can even get there. So and that's what they're discussing. <laughs> I mean the the idea that uh, that there should be a, a, so much um, bounty and so much so much uh, so yeah so much um, benefit of our of our social production. It's just overflowing amounts of, of uh, benefit that everybody has what they need uh, and they don't need to, and they, they have much more freedom to, to do what they want with their lives. Um, that is, um, I guess that is the, the unifying um, aspiration. Uh, and that that should be uh, the, the available to all human beings or all members of the society. That is the unifying aspiration, which is, I guess, different from uh, in a capitalist system. Uh, and that might, yeah, that you can accuse that as, as although everybody has their own interpretation of that uh, as being not heterogeneous, as being unified. I'll That's, stop that and then. Um, okay. okay. It's funny uh, that. Okay. Good. good. Yeah. <laughs> good. I, I mean, that was the kind of the one of the most interesting thing I think. Okay. Uh, so, 그 이, 중국에 가진 이런 정 정책이 어 이제 어떤 정책 면에서 비균질 한다는 것뿐만 아니라 어떤 백그라운드 혹은 이제 사람들의 전문성에 있어서도 비균질하다고 할 수는 있을 것 같습니다. 그래서 물론 이게 아주 완벽한 시스템은 아니죠. 그러니까 매, 어, 아직 개선해야 할 부분들이 아주 많습니다. 근데 이데올로기라는 부분에서 비균질하다고 할 수는 없겠죠. 왜냐하면은 이것이 어떤 하나의 파티, 하나의 당이나 이제 
그것 당을 지지하고 있기 때문입니다. 근데 이제 어 이제 흥미로운 것은 어 그것이 당 안에서의 어떤 굉장히 민주적인 것을 통해서 이제 어그 사회에 살고 있는 모든 사람들의 안녕과 어 이제 통합을 통합이나 공산을 위해서 이제 <웃음> 토론하고 있다는 것이 이제 흥미로운 지점이고 어 이것은 굉장히 이제 우리 어 민주주의 부르자에서 이루어지고 있는 사회적 어 이윤을 이윤을 이윤이 목적으로 하는 주된 것이 되는 그런 사회적 과정과 매우 다르다고 한 점만 말씀드리는 것을 아, 말씀드렸다고 할수 있겠습니다. So one one interesting thing just to to add to that like that Xi Jinping's administration have revitalized Mao's mass line practice, right? I don't know if you know what the mass line is, but that process is whereby I mentioned it a bit in the talk. Is whereby the members of the party go to the people and uh, uh, ask them what they what's their problem, right? They go to the masses and then they ask them what their problem. They go away and they think about how they can help them with that problem. Then they then they go back to the masses or to the people or to the women or whatever the constituency is, and they say, okay, we maybe we can do this, and then. The masses respond and say no, or maybe, or this or that. You know, uh, criticize the party's proposal. So the party has to go back and study again, and come back with a new proposal. And in, and this is an iterative process, and you're just going back, think about it, come back, discuss, go away, come back, and they've re uh, and until there is some kind of uh, coming together of uh, of the party and the people. And uh, this practice has been strongly, uh, you know, re-emphasized in the current administration in China. Mm -hmm. Make uh, make the party officials more uh, responsive to the needs of the people, and that the, the success of the party will only be when they are providing what what the people need, and the people really need, because it, it's not like they 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 can fake their needs or that they can. Uh, they should pretend that their needs are being satisfied when they're not. And part of that is also that uh, that's under Xi Jinping's leadership. They've, um, they've made it illegal or punishable to, uh, to um, buy expensive gifts or to like, uh, um, there, there used to be a practice. I just heard this, uh, That usually after you get off work, you would go out drinking, and you would, you know, have expensive dinners, and uh, and then you, on your free days you would go out shopping to buy gifts to like influence people, and this is all gone now during the Xi Jinping period, apparently. Uh, now everybody in the Communist Party has to have an app, and on this app they have to uh, they get some texts to read, which they are. They have to get together and discuss these texts, so they're 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 being constantly uh, forced to discuss uh, various uh, historical materialist or, or or feminist or whatever recent theory texts uh, together. So there's like a political education campaign inside the party, which has been intensified as well, which is also part of this mass line uh, retrieval of the mass line technique from Mao. Mm. 그래서 그, 그 어, 강연에서도 말했던 그런 마오쩌둥에서 시진핑까지 이어지는 그런 어, 정책에서 보면은 매스 라인, 매스 라인 대중과 소통하는 어떤 테크닉이 있었음을 알수 있는데요. 그래서 그 어, 어떤 당에서 당에 속한 멤버들이 항상 어떤 대중 국민들에게 가서 그들이 무엇이 필요한지 묻고 또, 또 이제 또 반대로 이렇게 또 하는 그런 어, 상호적인 그런 어떤 소통의 테크닉이 있었다는 것을 말씀을 드렸고요. 그래서 이러한 것들이 이제 마오 쩌둥에서부터 시작한 것이 최근 중 이것을 최근 중국 정부가 계속 이제 강화하고 있, 어, 네, 강화하고 있다고 합니다. 음. 그리고 이제 퇴근 이후에 어떤 비싼 저녁을 사거나 어떤 사람들에게 이제 어. 어, 이제 선물을 주는 등의 이런 관습들이 시진핑에 오면서 금해졌고 
그리고 이제 당 안에서도 계속해서 어떤 어, 교육적인 어떤 최근 최근 중요한 어떤 정치적 정치 이론을 같이 공부하는 그런 움직임이 이제 당 안에서 계속 있다고 합니다. 네. Yeah. One one last note about that. Sorry, but uh, that you know I have some young Chinese students, and they tell me uh, it's too much, and it's they don't like it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but but their parents love it, so <laughs> this is the situation, right? 되게 재밌는 것은 최근에 이제 젊은 중국 중국 학생들은 이것을 별로 좋아하지 않는데요. 너무 좀 심하다고 별로 안 좋아하는데 그들의 부모님 세대는 굉장히 좋아한다고 합니다. And then about what was it? What was the question? Ah, okay. And then the other question she had was, 원시나 summer school 등이라는 게 일시적인. 이거 혹시 좀 <웃음> 요약해 주실 수 있으실지. 정수진님, 혹시 이 질문 직접 해 주실 수 있으신가요? 아, 이 땡, 네, 정수진님 가능하실까요? 오케이, 슈바스. Uh, she wanted to hear more about the summer school, like where there was this performance oriented workshops. And the other one was, uh, you said you kind of reject all the claims of immateriality. And I think that she noticed that in Korea these days, she, uh, there is a lot of talk around the metaverse. And then there's a lot of work, artworks and discourses around that. And then she was really wondering about your thoughts on that. Okay. Um, well, first, yeah, I mean, the, the, the workshops, the, the, the summer schools are, are really concerned, like basically developing uh, two aspects. They're, they're more or less the same thing. Uh, one is uh, embodying thinking. So how can we think with our bodies or body with our minds? I don't know, but somehow to overcome the body-mind split in criticality, right? In, in thinking, in being critical and analyzing. So how can we be po both part of something and stand back from that and cr analyze it or criticize it? How can we do both at the same time? So how can, and how can we, and each, that's, uh, we try to, you know, make a, a, a situation where everybody can develop their own approaches to that, you know, building on what their practices are coming into the summer school. It's very important to think about it as well as it was to think about it as well as it was. 어, 몸과 함께 생각하기, 사유하기에 대한 것이었습니다. 그래서 이것은 어, 이제 어떤 서구에서 이루어졌던 신체와 정신 사이의 분리 구분에 대해서 고, 어, 극복하고자 하는 것이었고 사실 이것이 궁극적으로 향하는 것은 이 어, 비판을 어떻게 하, 하는 것이냐에 대한 건데 이제 그러니까 어, 느끼고 생각하는 것, 사고하는 것이 이제 따로 생각되어 왔다면 은 어, 이제 체화된 사고를 통해서 이것을 같이 함으로써 어떻게 비판을 실행할 수 있을지 그리고 그들의 이제 고유한 어, 사라진 경험에서 그들의 고유한 어떤 접근을 접근이 어떻게 가능할 수 있을지에 대한 것이었습니다. The other aspect of the summer school is is institutionality. So it's understanding where we are and what allows us to to do the things we want to do. So for example, if we are in the contemporary art space we try to understand how the contemporary art space is reproduced in the society, in the city, in the country. You know, how does, how does that institutionality, which is protecting our practice, is it, is it reproduced? And how can we, inside this institutionality, generate our own like mini institutionalities, which can protect our, our, the practices that we would like to develop? You know, between us. So, how can we associate together, and how how can we strengthen each other, 
and how can we uh, ensure that we can have the time and space to and and safety to uh, develop the practices that you know. Mm. That maybe, 다른 yeah, 다른 다른 서머스 서머스 클의 다른 중요한 어떤 부분 중 하나는 어떤 기관성 어떤 대학이나 어떤 현대 미술 기관 또 공간이라는 기관과 어떻게 함께 협력하여서 당론들을 이뤄낼 수 있을지에 대한 이야기였습니다. Okay. Um, the metaverse and uh, yeah, so immateriality. I, I don't I don't accept any. I reject all immateriality uh, claims. Uh, I think it's very important to understand that every idea, even idea, even concept is embodied and has to be reproduced materially in the body of the person who has the idea or the concept. Uh, so that is a political uh, situation because, because how, how is your body reproduced? How is your capacity to think or participate in society reproduced? And that is uh, dependent on all kinds of other social production, right? Agriculture, um, well, you know, uh, the water management system of the city, electricity production, uh, public transport, all that stuff, you know, that that is integrated in our in our, every single concept or idea that we may have, right? And so we need to be cognizant of the reproduction on a deep level, on the societal level of of even our ideas, which can be claimed to be immaterial, or you can say your soul or your spirit, you know, no, none of that is immaterial. It's all materially grounded and needs to be materially reproduced. 저는 그 강연에서도 어, 그 이야기했는데요. 그 비물질성에 대한 어떤 모든 주장들을 좀 거부하는 편입니다. 왜냐하면은 세상의 모든 것은 뭐 어떤 사, 사고나 무엇이든 어떤 컨셉이든 관념이건 그것이 어, 이제 체화된 상태로 우리가 그것을 이제 인식하게 되고 그것이 여러 가지 상황의 조건 속에서 어, 구체화되는 것을 알수 있습니다. 음, 그래서 이것은 굉장히 정치적인 상황, 어, 조건, 상황이라고 생각을 합니다. 그래서 어떤 농업이라든지 어떤 어, 물, 수질, 개, 수질 유지 시스템이라든지 공, 어, 교통이라든지 모든 이런 컨셉들이 우리의 관념 안에 이제 들어와서 어, 이게 어떻게 사회적으로 구체화되든 다시 우리 관념 속으로 들어오든 그것이 굉장히 이제 어, 물질적인 과정이라고 하실 수 있겠습니다. So when we're thinking about the metaverse, um, well, what is it exactly? You know, it's a, it's a, a system of uh, electronic apparatus, you know, which is tied into the cloud. Well, well all those, you know, and then we are, we are um, our behavior is being, is being brought into, into this apparatus, right? Through various sensors, that are in your device or whatever, whatever is being used to, uh, to navigate through the metaverse, right? So it's a highly technical environment, right? That is completely material, right? Like all those apparatus, the cloud is just servers, right? It's, it, it has to be somewhere. All your experience that you are seeing on the screen or you are hearing in your ears, not to mention the fact that your eyes and ears are material, the experience of it is being generated on servers somewhere. And these, these servers need to be maintained by people. They need to, uh, the electricity uh, needs to continue to feed those servers. That has to be maintained by people. Um, you know, uh, the, the, all that electronic uh, uh, apparatus needs to be reproduced regularly. Uh, all, the, all the chips and everything, all the RAM, all everything needs to be replaced regularly. Um, so there is no immateriality there at all. And the conditions under which those, uh, all that electronic, uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, apparatus need to be reproduced, the labor conditions, and the and and the and if you want to get into 
the feminist uh, concerns, you know, then you know how 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 is women's reproductive labor active in the reproduction of the metaverse? That is a, a completely essential and legitimate question, right? This doesn't disappear with this metaverse. It's completely integrated. If women stop doing uh, reproductive labor, the metaverse will also disappear. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh -huh. 네, 그래서 메타버스에서 대해서 말씀드리면은 메타버스가 도대체 뭘까요? 우선 약간 어, 네, 전, 전자적 장치 클라우드일까요? 이게 어, 그러니까 메타버스라는 것은 우리의 정말 사라진 경험 어떤 행동들이 어떤 뭐 디바이스나 센서를 통해서 다시 그 서버에 들어가는 거잖아요. 그래서 이것은 굉장히 굉장히 기술적이기 때문에 그렇기 때문에 완벽히 물질적이라고 할수 있습니다. 그래서 그 클라우드에 있는 어떤 내용들, 콘텐츠 혹은 그 안에 들어가 있는 칩, 램 같은 장비는 어딘가 있, 어딘가 존재해야 되고 그리고 그것을 그 메타버스에서 경험하는 우리의 물질적 경험이 다시 서버에 들어가서 다시 그 안에서 작동을 하잖아요. 어, 그리고 또한 이것은 굉장히 제가 말했던 노동의 문제와 굉장히 관련이 있기 때문에 물질성을 배제할 수는 없습니다. 뭐 예를 들면 이제 여자 여성들이 재생산 노동을 어, 그만두면 당연히 메타버스도 없어지겠죠. 그리고 마지막 질문이 될것 같은데요. 채윤님이 지금 채팅방에 남겨주신 질, 마지막 질문 이야기하면서 오늘 자리를 마무리하면 좋을 것 같습니다. So I'll be the last question. Um, so is Cheyun gave gave you the last question? Mm. So I think today is really needed to um, critique, to have this critical perspective, where, um, like what you said, um, this cross crossing criss crossing of eco ecology, feminism, commun communism, and crossing with the uh, uh, non-anthropocentric against this patriarchal capitalism. I think it's very needed today. And I really appreciate you share this, uh, your artistic practice, the example, and I appreciate it. And on the other hand, I think the, the three of the, the aspects of the uh, the philosophy you gave was like too, uh, I don't know, too difficult. So to comprehend. So the one was the uh, the thick present. So Harry Harry emphasized the thick uh, thick present was like solely secular. Uh, the problem in this on this kind of planet fairly secular on this underground kind of problem. And then she was wondering uh, how could you um, secularly and uh, articularly uh, think and participate in that realm, in that, in that thick present Um, so I think she's wondering uh, how can you um, practice, uh, how can you think and participate in this thick present with the, with the ecology, feminism, and communism you mentioned earlier. So I think she was wondering about this, uh, the particular way. Mm -hmm. in this very secular, uh, detailed way. What's this word secular? You mean like, like uh, not religious? Like... Uh... No, like a, more like a, in reality, I think. Okay, like, like practical or like... Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, 
Okay, yeah, I'm very sorry. Uh, I, I, I need to get better at uh, making a more um, entertaining or more, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, it's, 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 it's difficult for me too. So, uh, and I, I, I agree that this talk was uh, a little bit too abstract. Um, the, one of the points I wanted to make here was that even though, well, I, I think we need to, uh, I mean, this is, this is part of my thesis is that, and, but it's also in, thankfully also in Haraway, that, that even though we are concerned with the biosphere, this comes down to, um, a lot comes down to our engagement with each other and with other human beings. So humanity is still very much a problem or a point of, you know, political action for us. We cannot like, we can't abstract away from human problems, right? The problems of, of being together on the planet as humans. Um, and we can't kind of root around it by uh, attending only to nature or to, yeah, the natural world because our understanding of nature has already been humanized. And that's what I was trying to get at. Mm. Uh, so that's what makes it very difficult. And, and of course, Haraway is great at uh, you know, th making us dive into the difficulty without any, you know, compromises. And still we are kind of entertained because her language is so vibrant and so, you know, vivid. So there's that. Um, uh, and how, how can you, how can you um, practice this, you know, yeah. I mean, if you're lucky enough to have the time to spend and and allow yourself to uh, really encounter this thick present, you know, if you're lucky enough to do it, even with with a friend or with a colleague or with several colleagues, um, you can you can hopefully develop languages uh, to share your experience of this. Of course, encountering it in a in a consciousness of of being part of the biosphere and how biospheric productivity contributes to your capacity to experience the think present, thick present. This is what we need to kind of develop. It's, a, it's an embodied practice, and maybe more expansively, it's a embodied in the biosphere practice. It's very difficult. We don't have uh, uh, a lot of the, you know, the practices that we need. And in a way, we all have to develop them for ourselves. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, the, 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 the communist aspect or the socialist aspect, it, it also comes with, with what you feel is important. It all it definitely has to be driven by your own intuitions of what needs to be done to to for, for in one in one basic sense, give yourself more time and space to <laughs> to um, uh, stay with the thick present, to stay with the trouble, uh, and to to generate you know maybe communities of concern that can act effectively to address uh, problems in the biosphere or or, or to uh, to act politically. Um, this is, this, these are all like super complex. And I mean, I'm, I, I'd love to, since this is the last question, I, I mean, I, I definitely cannot resolve this question now, but um, I'd love to keep track of, you know, and encourage you and support your research um, and your work in this, in as far as I can. Uh, in this regard, I can also really, I mean, we're going to share the, the bi bibliography uh, for this talk. And I mean, I can point you uh, to uh, Stefania Barca's uh, book on uh, uh, forces of reproduction. I don't know if it's translated in Korean yet, but it's super strong. And uh, it, it, it really does. All, it, it is very strongly political as well. Um, and maybe that will also give you some good clues too. But yeah, I mean, we have to do it together. So we have to 
we have to keep in contact. We have to share experiences. We have to share techniques and try to, you know, find the techniques that work and, uh, and, try, and where we can come together on priorities or on political action, come together. And uh, yeah, um, it's, uh, you know, it's a long learning process. But again, uh, I think one last thing maybe, sorry, Juan. Um, uh, the idea of having events like an art exhibition or making an artwork and presenting it or making a film and presenting it, these are very, very important. I think when you can concretize and kind of make something happen in the world that, that wasn't there before, it really catalyzes discussion. It allows discussion to take place in, in, in you know, and brings people together who might not otherwise be, be together. So I, I very much encourage you to not necessarily make masterpieces, you know, just make tests and try, try something, but make publications, publish, pub, publish, publish, of course, has public in it, right? Make something public, make an event happen. And even if it happens online and see the result and try to understand how, how to, how to produce the kind of change that you want to, or the kind of discussions that you want to cultivate in the world. And yeah, we need to, we need to build our networks and, and learn together. 네, 어, 이것은 굉장히 어려운 일입니다. 그래서 헤러웨이도 도나 헤러웨이도 어려움과 함께 하라고 했고, 네, 그녀는 이 어려움과 함께 했는데 어, 타협, 절대 타협을 하지 않았습니다. 그래서 제가 드릴 수 있는 어, 방법은 이제 좀더 시간을 갖고 어, 친, 친구나 어떤 동료와 함께 어떤 어, 이러한 언어들을 어려움이 있는 언어들을 함께 개발을 하는 것입니다. 그리고 그러니까 이 언어들은 이제 우리가 어떤 생물권, 그러니까 이미 의인화되고 인간화된 자연에서 살고 있는 그 경험을 이제 나누고 이것을 어, 어, 이것의 어려움에 대해서 이제 어, 그 언어를 개발을 하는 것이죠. 음 그리고 이제 어 음. 네, 그래서 굉장히 어려운 문제이고 이것을 지금 제가 해결할 수는 없지만 어, 이제 제가 어, 그제 강연에서 썼던 어, 사용했던 창고 문헌을 공유를 할 텐데요. 그래서 그 스테파니 바르카가 말했던 재생산의 힘을 꼭 읽어보시기 바랍니다. 이 글은 굉장히 강력하고 음, 여기서 많은 인사이트를 얻을 수 있을 것입니다. 그래서 어, 이제 저희 같이 계속 연락하고 저희가 가진 경험들을 공유를 하고 음, 그런 배우는 과정 속에서 조금 더 구체화될 수 있을 것이라고 생각합니다. 그리고 가장 마지막으로는 어 이제 그 이벤트가 에 대해서 이야기를 했는데요. 이제 뭐 이벤트라는 것은 <웃음> 어 이제 미술을 만들기, 뭐 미술 창작하기 혹은 뭐 여러 가지 예술 활동이 될수 있겠죠. 저는 이것이 굉장히 중요하다고 생각합니다. 그래서 이것이 이제 <웃음> 저희가 살고 있는 세계에 어떤 것을 해픈하게 하고 만드는 것이고 어, 어떤 여러 가지 테스트와 시도를 통해서 어, 사람들에게 알리고 퍼블리시 출판을 하는 하고 결과물을 보는 것 이것이 굉장히 중요하다고 생각합니다. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of people who are concerned with this, uh, maybe more than you think, concerned with the same things that you're concerned with here in Korea, of course, and around the world, and of course how that is worked on and developed is different here locally and, and around the world, but you can, you're not alone with your, with your work. And, and uh, so, you know, try to, try to reach out and uh, build the networks that you, that you need to sustain your practices. Uh, and, uh, and uh, yeah, we are here for you at the uh, loop. <laughs> <웃음> 네, 연락하시고 네, 네, 네트워크를 계속 공유하면서 이야기를 이어나가고자 하십니다. 날씨 더 꺼주세요. 네, 그러면 오늘 마지막 질문까지 답해주셔서 감사드립니다. 
그 저희가 오늘부터 시작해서 다음 주까지 이 세, 예술가를 위한 생태사회주의 세미나를 총 6회 진행을 해요. 그래서 오늘 들어보시고 관심이 있으시면 은 저희 우선 예약은 마감되었습니다만 어, 링크 보내드릴 수 있으니까요. 루, 어, 관심 있으신 수업, 뭐, 뭐, 렉처나 있으시면 은 루프 메일로 어, 연락 부탁드립니다. 그리고 오늘 어, 바루 구틀립 선생님 두 시간 동안 <웃음> 고생 많으셨고요. 감사드립니다. 그리고 김지원 선생님도 오늘 쉽지 않은 번역이었는데 <웃음> 어, 정말 네, 큰일 하셨네요. <웃음> 감사드리고요. 그리고 저희는 이제 계속 진행을 하고 전시도 보러 오시고 저희하고 계속 정보도 주시고 하시는 활동도 알려주시기도 하고 네 트러블과 함께 하면서 계속 예술 프로젝트를 함께 만들어 나갔으면 좋겠습니다. 네 그럼 오늘 만남은 이것으로 <웃음> 마치도록 하겠습니다. 감사드립니다. If you have, if you want to reach out, then contact me through Loop. I'll be there to respond. 감사합니다.